Hey guys, so I'm here with my reading wrap up for the month of May. I'm really happy with what I got read in May because at one point I thought I wasn't going to get an awful lot read at all. Um, so I'm really happy not only with the amount I got read but with what I actually did read. Um, so the first book that I read in May was Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon, the second book in the Outlander series. Um, I actually started reading this in April and I think according to my Goodreads I started reading it on like the 20th of May. Um, May? The 20th of April. Um, so obviously it took me a substantial chunk of April to read and then also I don't think I finished it until about halfway through May um, which I didn't actually mind. I mean normally I hesitate to pick up big books and I mean this is a big book it's 960 pages. I hesitate to pick them up because I know that they're going to take me that little bit longer to read and when you are doing wrap-ups and you're posting reviews etc on both YouTube and a blog you almost kind of resent it because you know that you're going to have less content because you're reading less if that makes sense um but I really wanted to read this um because I haven't been watching the second series of the show um because I knew in my heart of hearts that if I watched the show before reading the book it would sort of demotivate me because I mean it is a big book um, and that would just be another factor not to pick up the book. I'd be like, you know what, I've seen the show, I don't need to read the book. And um, I didn't want that. I wanted to read the book before I saw the show. Um, so yeah, I finally finished this, like I say, about halfway through um, May. And I'm so glad I picked it up. It was definitely the right time for me to pick it up, even though it was slow going. It wasn't so much the book that was slow going. It was me, because obviously... I've had a stressful time at work recently as well um so I just haven't when I've when I've come home in the evening I've literally just like chilled out I haven't even read in the evenings because I've just been so tired and so worn out so I was like maybe reading this to and from work and that was it um for a a good amount of time so it was my fault that it was slow going like it was my reading habit at the time plus when I did pick this up um it was kind of jarring because it didn't 100% pick up from where Outlander left off I was a bit like oh this wasn't where we finished at so then it took about 90 pages for you to sort of figure out like what was going on and why etc um so yeah but it was really really good and as always I recommend you guys pick up this series um I really enjoyed it and the end of this one oh my god um, I really want to pick up Voyager but then I'm like then I yeah it's it's too soon plus I want to watch season two of the show before I pick up Voyager so yeah but really really enjoyed that and gave it five out of five that was an emotional roller coaster of a read as well like a lot of shit goes down I'm not even gonna lie to you like oh my god Oh my god. Okay, after finally finishing Dragonfly and Amber, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I wanted light, fluffy, easy, uncomplicated reads that I could just plough through um, because I just, I wanted to. I wanted Regency Romance because um, I haven't read a Regency Romance in a little while, so I decided that I was going to. And the first one that I picked up was a little novella, and that is... The Princess War Played by Karen Hawkins. I'm loving the blues on this cover. It's very striking to me. I really like it. Um, and this is the Oxenberg Princes novella 1.5. Okay, so it is only a little novella. It's about 120 pages worth. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, the Oxenberg Princes series is what introduced me to Karen Hawkins. Um, the Prince Who Loved Me and... Oh, is it The Prince and I? Yes, so The Prince Who Loved Me and The Prince and I. Those were the, my first introduction to Karen Hawkins and I found a, you know, a new favourite Regency romance author with her. Um, so I picked this one up on my Kindle and like I say, it's only a short one, but I really, really liked it. I mean, The Prince Who Loved Me is sort of a Regency Cinderella retelling and um, The Prince and I is like a, a Robin Hood 
kind of retelling. And this is a very short but sweet sort of Beauty and the Beast retelling um, to some degree. And it, it was just really cute. Um, you have this princess um, of Oxenburg who has... She's been in Scotland and she's had a carriage accident and she's hit her head and she's wandered off from everybody else. And at first she didn't know who she was, but now she realises who she was, but no one believes her. So she's working as a maid in this little inn. And then this guy, um, I think he's an earl, um, who has, you know, he's got a bad limp. He walks with a cane. He's been injured. Um and they meet and things go from there. It was really, really cute. I really, really liked it. And I gave it 4.5 out of 5. It, it was a novella and I really enjoyed it. But part of me wishes it was a full length novel because I loved the characters enough that I would have liked them to have their own novel. But as a little novella, it was good enough. Then I was on a roll. So I picked up um, the first book in her Duchess Diaries series, which was How to Capture a Countess. Um... Again, this was... I just love Karen Hawkins. Some people will not like them because they are a little bit cheesy, a little bit unbelievable. I mean, it's Regency Romance, what are you going to do? Um, but it was really, really cute. Um, it's about a girl called Rose um, who meets um, the Earl of Sinclair when she, she's 16 and I think he's in his 20s. And they're at this ball and she's got a bit of a crush on him. And she tries to get his interest and keep him interested in that English conversation and he thinks that she's older than she is so they end up in this garden and he kisses her and she like panics because it's obviously it's her first kiss and she pushes him into a fountain um and then she disappears and he is humiliated because his nickname is the Earl of Sin and when she pushes him into this fountain the entire ton calls him the Earl of Finn and he's determined to get his own back on her. Um, and so they meet at his aunt's um, sort of, I think she's hosted like a ball. Um, and so she has all these guests um, and there's activities before this ball. Um, and so he sets out to seduce her, but actually obviously it develops into more than that. And oh my goodness, it was just too cute. And it was funny. It made me smile. I really enjoyed it. And it was just what I needed at the time. And I gave it 4.5 out of 5. Loved it. Then I picked up the sequel to that, which is about Rose's sister, Lily, and it's how to pursue a princess. And Lily's father has got them into some financial difficulty. He has taken out a loan from a neighbour, which he cannot pay back. So either um, Lily and Rose's sister, Dahlia, is going to have to marry um, the man with the loan that's lent them this money, or her father's going to go to prison. So Lily is going to sacrifice herself and marry a rich man. Um, so she goes to the Duchess's um, next lot of entertainments. You might think that Rose, who's married an Earl, could bail them out, but she's on her honeymoon, so she knows nothing about this. So Lily goes to basically try and land a rich man. But one there, she bumps into this man called Wolf and um, there's an instant kind of attraction there. But she can't have him because he's told her while he's a prince, he's a poor prince and she's resolute she has to marry a rich man to get her family out of trouble but little does she know that wolf actually is wealthy but he's not telling her that because he wants a woman to love him for him and not for his money um really cute um i didn't enjoy this one quite as much i gave it four out of five it was still cute but the love at first sight thing um i don't know about it i really don't i'm undecided um on how that whole thing played out um but it was still karen hawkins i still enjoyed the writing i still thought it was cute and it still brought a smile to my face um particularly the duchess's pugs she has like six pugs and they all have these really adorable personalities and i loved it and then the last book that i read in may was another novella and this was one of the duchess diaries novellas and it's princess in disguise there we go. And this is uh, a princess of Oxenburg. She's a princess of Oxenburg by marriage. Um, her first husband died and she's actually come to Scotland because she wants to remarry and she meets um, Earl of Kintore, I think his name was, um, and she's determined that they will make a good match, but he's decided never to marry. Um, and yeah, just goes from there. Um, and I gave that one about four out of five because it was I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the princess well played I thought that was the best novella out of the two so yeah that's what everything that I got read in May 
a little bit random, I know. Um, but after reading Dragonfly and Amber, I wanted read and see romance. I wanted quick and easy reads, and that's exactly what those were. So yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon. Happy reading.